And when it got to the point where I couldn't afford to take them out every day, that's when the affection started to dwindle off. No money, no honey. No money, no honey. Mm -hmm. what, what's your thoughts on why the relationship died after two months? Um, I can tell you now, it's nothing but money. So Alvin, I know you want to tell your story uh, from beginning to end, uh, your journey, so guys can get a picture of uh, what, what it was like for you, the lessons you learned, your unfortunate, sad scam story, and ultimately how all your experience culminated into a relationship that you're very happy in, living in Ukraine with an amazing Slavic woman. Um, so can you share your story with us? Uh, beginning with what year it started, uh, what year we're in now, time frame of it, and the big lessons you've learned. Yeah, well, my first trip out here was in May of 2013. Um, I had a month in the lovely town of Krivorog, <laughs> and two years later I came back, only this time I came back to Kiev, the lady that I was seeing at that stage, had, oh, pardon me, had moved from Krivorog to Kiev. Second trip went better than the first trip, and I'm thinking, yeah, this is good, great, something's going to happen. Went home, worked my ass off to get back here for the third time, thinking to myself, yes, this is it, we are going to do something, something's going to happen, da, 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 da. Well, that third trip, I was probably here for four months, and nothing's happened, and I'm starting to think, well, it's going to happen tomorrow. No. And how, how many times did you see her in a, in a was, week, let's say? I was seeing her probably three to four times a week. Okay. And four months and what, what happened? Doesn't seem like a serious relationship. Yeah, well, I'm trying to say, okay, well, let's go out tonight. We'll go out for dinner. We'll go here. We'll go and do something. But it was always only ever daytime meetings. Mm -hmm. um, the meetings were always in public places. Mm -hmm. And the other thing that people need to understand here is open of, uh, shows of affection in public are not really accepted here. Taboo for yeah. the most part. Pe people don't like it and it will get you a very bad reputation very fast. But So, so can I ask you, on this relationship, um, were you on the translator clock? No. No translator. No, okay, no translator, but four months relationship, uh, three times a week, daytime only. So what, what was the deal here, do you think? Um, I'm absolutely positive that she was involved with more than one, one other person writing letters and her garnishing money from sites and mm -hmm. people mm -hmm. because while I'm struggling to make a living here, she's not working and she's all the time in new clothes. Mm -hmm. So what was her deal with you? Why would she meet with you? You're, you're paying for dinners, you're going out for meals. Did you, did you buy her clothes? Did you pay her some money? What was her end game? Um, no, I, w I was probably her entertainment. Mm. Um, we'd go and do things together. Uh, the one thing that I haven't mentioned, she had a son. Mm -hmm. um, so we'd go together as a group. So the son was getting a lot of entertainment out of it. Um, she was getting entertainment during the day, and I was getting to pay for it all. Mm -hmm. um, and how old was she at that time? How old were you? Something I was 56, mm -hmm. and that would have made her uh, 37, 38 or something. Mm -hmm. So bit, quite a bit of an age gap there. Uh, yeah. Um, so what do you think was the, do you think it was the age gap? Uh, that, no. No? no, no. The age gap was okay. No, it was when I caught onto the scam. Uh -huh. So what? Why? Why? Why was she using you for entertainment? Right um, you back. Good source of money. Good what? source of income. Income. Yeah. Why income? I'm missing something. Um, well, I'm paying for all of the things that she was wanting to do. Ah, so you're going out not just for dinners, but you're doing a lot of things. Give me an idea. What what sort of what did your life uh, look like with her for four months? Well, most of the time it was only over daytime. So we're going out. We're taking the boy out to fun parks and mm -hmm. everything else. And this is summertime in Ukraine now. Summertime in Ukraine, long daylight hours. Mm -hmm. Everybody goes out and 
enjoys themselves. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't, didn't seem that unusual in the beginning, but towards the end it was definitely something wrong. Okay. So what did she be? This is a great informational tip for guys. She was not into you, clearly. Uh, after four months, you discerned that. And so what were the clues? Now, looking back with hindsight, as it's 2020, what were the clues that she wasn't really into you? Um, a very clear change in behavior. Change in behavior. Yes. From, oh, hello, and being happy and enthusiastic to greet me whenever I went to her. I'd go to her, she'd never come to where I was. Mm -hmm. um, to, oh, you're here, okay, let's go. So there was a very big change in attitude as far as that goes. Um, then the excuses started, oh, I can't, I've got something on, oh, I've got to go and see my mother or my sister's on the way and... Mm -hmm. As to why you can't meet? Yep. Mm -hmm. And what about physical affection? Signs, displays of physical affection? They Is stopped it? as well. And so they, they were for how long? Um, probably for the first couple of months. A couple of months, and, and if you don't mind sharing, what sort of physical affection? Uh... Um, it was pretty hard to get too intimate when you've got a seven-year-old running around mm -hmm. with special needs. Mm -hmm. so, so the environment was not... Uh, was not um, conducive. Conducive. Yeah. To and every time I tried to organise it so we could have alone time without the boy there, there was always an excuse. Mm -hmm. So for a couple of months, yeah, I could put up with it. So, Alvin, what you know, what what kind of physical signs were there that uh, first of all was she into you? Can you give us an idea of how she, what sort of Displays of public affection or, or private affection were there, you know, um, I think guys can learn a lot from that. Yeah, from the, for the first couple of months, there was affection. There was? Yeah. Okay. Um, she was, what, what sort of affection? She was not shy of me holding hands in public, mm -hmm. um, hugging, kissing in public. That was fine. Okay, even kissing in public, yeah. which, is, which is kind of taboo here, so that's, that's quite a sign uh, that she's into you. Yeah, and mm -hmm. then slowly over the next month that started to dwindle off, mm -hmm. and by the time we got to the fourth month it just wasn't happening at all. Mm -hmm. yeah, so, so. So, so the faction uh, died out? Yes. Okay, so it seems like in this relationship, I don't know, was she into you for the first couple of months? Do you think she had good intentions? Or what's your thoughts at the end of the day? Uh, knowing what I know now, mm -hmm. no, she didn't. She wasn't into you for the no. first two months? Um, what she was into was my bank account and my wallet. Mm -hmm. Do you mind sharing how do, how do you know that? How do you feel uh, um, that now at the end, uh, with, in hindsight? When I first came to Ukraine, I had a little bit of a bankroll. I had a little bit of money behind me that, in case I needed it. Slowly but surely, we used that up, doing the things that she wanted to do and everything else, looking after her son. And when it got to the point where I couldn't afford to take them out every day, that's when the affection started to dwindle off. No money, no honey. No money, no honey. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is an important point, I think. Um, so you, what was her end game, you think? It, it just was, she was looking for a man that was a good provider and your bankroll dried up and so she changed her mind as well? Or what, what's your thoughts on why the relationship died after two months? Um, I can tell you now, it's nothing but money. Nothing but money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I did discover that she was writing to several other men, and, you, and still is. Uh -huh. So you met her on one of the big Bohemoth uh, online yes. PPL sites. And I also put a couple of false profiles on other sites and met her on those. Mm -hmm. So a big lesson here seems like, even though you were in a relationship with her, and she probably claimed you were exclusive to each other, mm -hmm. she was still employed by the agency. Oh, yeah getting paid by them to chat yes. with other men. Yep. You probably didn't know that at the time, I'm assuming? Um, when I first got here, no. But by the end of the fourth month, I not only knew, I had the proof and I knew which people she was dealing with. Mm -hmm. So, yes. 
buyer beware. Mm -hmm. And it was it was purely for the money. And yes, there's a certain person in Australia who is writing to her now. <laughs> Please stop. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So did you, if you, if you don't mind me asking, did, did, did this result in a broken heart for you? Like what were the um, emotional collateral damage for you, if you don't mind sharing? Not so much a broken heart, but I became very, very cynical of people here, mm -hmm. uh, especially the women. Mm -hmm. um, for quite a while, I didn't trust anybody, mm -hmm. including myself. Mm -hmm. Your judgment, probably. Yeah. Yeah. Don't trust your judgment to be able to discern who's a good person, who's not. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it, um, as it turns out, that was a bad choice because a few months later, I actually ended up meeting somebody here, and that's going very, very well. Yeah. Let's talk about your happy ending story. Yeah. yeah my happy ending. Yeah. Mm.